I made a like hypothetical thing. Little note that I made about how, what I would do if I want, <laughs> what I would, um, not what I would do, but I tried to make a hypothetical document about how you would approach defending Brian Callan, right? Um, against the allegations that have been levied against him last week of sexual misconduct against, you know, some instances that span, what, 20 years or something, right? Um, some people that have some very detailed accounts as to how it happened and how it went about. And he's obviously firm. He's kind of come out and denied this allegation and said the category didn't happen. But I was wondering, because it seems like, you know, socials kind of split in terms of what they believe. I'm also a big believer in, you know, um, due process. I think he should be given his day in court. I think just accusing somebody of something shouldn't mean they're guilty. But I'm also kind of aware of the idea. Oh, I'm also kind of a naive believer in that i don't think a woman will just kind of blindly come out and say you raped them just for clout or just for exposure i think that's a kind of a heavy crime to levy upon somebody i think it's a heavy allegation i think it's a smudge that you can't ever kind of get off it's a cloud that you can't ever outrun so i think people are society is kind of conscious about knowing when to kind of label somebody a rapist and when not to label somebody a rapist so i kind of kind of outlined that but then it also made me think because someone left a comment in the other video talking about what happened with um what happened with chris hardwick and what happened with aziz ansari and i saw this pretty interesting article pretty in-depth article from forbes magazine that basically talks about that issue at length right and kind of lays out exactly what happened and kind of paints a really um dire picture as to um the ill effects or the consequences sometimes of false allegations and the damage that that has, had, that has done to some respects to the me too movement which i honestly at the, even before i read the harvey weinstein book by um what's the guy's name the son of woody allen or the kind of supposed son of Woody. No, he's the son of Woody Allen, isn't he? What's his name? I've got it somewhere here. But anyway, when I read that book, doesn't matter, um, about the Harvey Weinstein case, even before I read that, I did think at the beginning the Me Too movement was uh, net positive because I guess, you know, especially when you read, when you watch a lot of crime documentaries and you see instances where women have unfortunately been raped in home invasions or <clears throat> by serial rapists, whatever it may be, you find out how crappy and how horrendous the experience, no, how crappy the police are with dealing with it and how horrendous of experience it is for the women in question to kind of relive that horror and, you know, try and get the person convicted of the crime that they were subjected to. It's just an entirely horrible experience. So to see this movie to move and rise up which kind of in a weird way the only way they could kind of retribution the only retribution they could get from it or kind of revenge was to was to kind of counsel the person publicly shame them i'm all game for it if you can't if you can't convict the person in court you know the least that you can do is take away everything they've worked for because you know they've essentially ruined your life uh through um whatever action they did in the past but this article sort of paints a different picture as sometimes the um uh, the shadow side says so exploring the shadow side of me too this is from uh forbes magazine it's from uh when's it last year by a lady called stephanie sarkis it says the following newton's law uh, newton's third law of physics states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction in the area of me too women have come forward detailing harassment and assault by men many times by the men in a position of power there have been cases where a man accused harassment and abuse states that he either did not engage in the behavior or that he was dismayed to find out that the partner reported their encounters as non-consensual sometimes documentation accompanies these statements in some cases a company has kept an alleged uh, perpetrator in the position or reinstated him after an internal investigation how does this impact all parties involved? It says appalling. An article in, New York, in the New Yorker details and that Al Franken original accuser Lynn Tweedy was connected with the media outlets that made that had a political interest in pushing forward her account, which is, you know, dubious to say the least. Franken resigned from Senate after a story of her photo surface where Franken is shown either groping or pretending to grope Tweedy's breast while she was asleep after performing a skit at a USO event. It should be noted that seven other women come forward alleging inappropriate behavior by Franken, but let's talk about these cases with a great area as cases without the known political agenda yeah that was an interesting one in it because i think at the time they were propping up al franken to be the next kind of you know um democratic candidate and then suddenly this picture comes out of him kind of pretending to grab a woman's breast and then some people try to defend it say it was a joke and then boom seven other stories come out so 
it feels like whenever these stories do come out, the allegations, there's always a bit of a... Maybe it's not so malicious because it does seem malicious. It does seem like whenever someone gets accused, there's never just one accusation. It's usually followed by a bevy of them. So if either it's the journalist trying to do their due diligence and make sure that the person has um, <clears throat> has a history of that kind of behavior and it's not a one-off thing, or it's the industry and somebody higher up deciding, hey, it's time for this person to be taken off their perch. We don't know. So it says here on June, June 14, 2018, Chloe, Derstra, Chloe Dijkstra wrote an article alleging that she had been in an abusive relationship, which she wrote included sexual abuse and emotional abuse. She gave details of the relationship, but did not name her former partner. However, it became clear that Dijkstra was referring to Nerdist founder and talking dead host Chris Hardwick. This is the really egregious one because I remember the time she never actually said his name in public. I think not until much later. She purposely kind of wanted to avoid it, whether because she knew her story had a lot of holes in it or because she didn't want to relive the horror and kind of say his name out loud. But it was interesting that he kind of got suspended or put on leave or put on garden leave from his job without even being named right it was just kind of alluded and that was enough like they kind of panicked but again that was at the height of me too <clears throat> it says here mc suspended cardwick appearance as a host of talking dead and nbc suspended his appearance as a host of the wall while they reviewed the accusations legendary entertainment who owns nerdist removed hardwick's name from their website after the allegation service they released a statement dis distancing themselves from hardwick said chris hardwick had no uh, operational involvement with the nerd these statements are always funny because they always try and distance you from whatever you were doing so that no one else comes after them and say that it's an institutional thing so they say chris hardwick had no operational involvement with the nerds for two years preceding his expiration of the contract december 2017 he no longer has any affiliation with legendary networks legendary digital network sorry the company has removed all reference to mr hardwick even as the original founder of nerds pending further investigation <coughs> sorry got a frog in my throat it says um Another one from the war says there are very serious allegations. Oh, him, he says that she's a, he's quote, there are very serious allegations, which is kind of similar to Callan actually, and not to be taken lightly, which is why I've taken the day to consider how to respond. I was heartbroken to read Chloe's post. Our free relationship was not perfect. We were ultimately not a good match and argued and even shouted at each other, but I loved her and I did my best to uplift and support her as a partner and companion in any way and at no time that sexually assault her. So the interesting part of it is that obviously once the story kind of rolled on, we kind of came to the, no, once more of the story was revealed, it was actually the fact that she had cheated on chris hardwick that was the issue he immediately broke up with her she went she then spiraled because you know you're in love you do crazy things kept texting him harassing him he wouldn't reply back he wouldn't respond he didn't want to meet up with her didn't know nothing to do with her and then in that kind of anger she decided to put out a story that she was mentally and um, emotionally and physically abusive which you know it's completely out of order but um once more the story came out you kind of saw oh so you cheated on the guy that's why he went mad so that was probably why she didn't want to say his name and also him as a gentleman he didn't even mention it in his statement he didn't say anything about the cheating he just kind of tried to keep it classy um, which obviously worked in the long run but you sometimes feel like if you are defending yourself you kind of have to go on the offensive and really go for the next of people and it says here Cardwick released a screenshot of the text with Dirkstra Hardwick stated that the, while he was living with Dirkstra he discovered she was unfaithful to him resulting in him ending the relationship he stated that Dirkstra had asked him to several weeks to reconcile but he declined due to cheating some responded that it is not unusual for a victim to abuse to pursue reconciliation um after internal review amc and nbc and legendary entertainment all three of the big ones how was reinstated in all three corporations he says we take these matters very seriously and are given the information available to us every uh, very carefully review including interviews with numerous individuals who believe returning chris to work is the appropriate step so he saw that story with chris go down and then the other one is the most egregious one, which is an anonymous woman named Grace, who we still don't know who she is at the moment, the Z Ansari thing, gave an account accusing Z Ansari of sexual assault after meeting him at a party and going back to his apartment. Screenshots of a text between Grace and Aziz and Ansari, sorry, um, Ansari, 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 was posted along with a link with the article. Ansari allegedly, allegedly texts the accuser and says that it was nice meeting her. The accuser responds with a freak paragraph text, including, We went back to your place, you ignored clear non verbal cues, you kept going with advances, you had known uh, you had to know i was uncomfortable which is insane in it right i don't think in the heat of trying to get laid any guy is gonna really be able to um um be able to clock non-verbal um cues that you're not comfortable i guess most women if they're not comfortable in the situation the ones I've, i've dealt with they will tell you quite clearly hey get get off me leave me alone i don't want to do this then you back when you go home right um you, you know you work on you work on Pornhub and you you, you know 
do your thing and go to bed. That's it. It's what, what else can you do, right? You've been rejected. It is what it is. And um, you choke up to the game. But these non-verbal cues at the height of us trying to, or at the height of this kind of sexual encounter is insane at the time. But hey, you know, and then disease texts it back. I'm so sad to hear that. I'm so sad to hear this. Sorry. All I can say is it would never be my intention to make you feel um, the way you described. Clearly, I misread things in a moment and I'm truly sorry. And it says here, it was true that everything that did seem okay. So when I heard that it was not the case for her, I was surprised and concerned. I took her words to heart and responded privately. I was taking the time to press what she said. I continue to support the movement that is happening in our culture. It's necessary and longer for you. So that goes to show you that sometimes, you know, all the allegations you hear, sometimes you should always try and hear the other side of the story, of course, right, in that respect. So it kind of got me thinking about how you would defend Callan in this situation. And I guess... Um, we should kind of go back to the point of we should make the accusation of great great i keep saying great we should make the rape ad accusation a big deal you shouldn't just be able to accuse somebody of rape and it be okay no you shouldn't be able to just, just accuse somebody of rape willy-nilly right we should um return the severity of the crime to the actual word to actual phrase right it shouldn't be just something you throw around willy-nilly it should be hey if the did the person actually rape you did they try and forcefully um you know touch your private parts in any kind of way without your permission yes okay rape if it was a clumsy sexual encounter they read the rogonic signals that is not rape we need to kind of get back to that point so if there's occasions that are a bit gray or that are a bit ambiguous we can kind of talk about it as adults but because you're throwing the rape label or attaching it to any kind of encounter that some people don't like or some people didn't read the right way it kind of messes up it messes up for everybody because the real issue at hand here is that actual real victims of rape have now their voices have somewhat dulled or they are probably a little bit more conscious or wary about stepping out especially if they see somebody getting a negative reaction right imagine if these women who because callan get completely rinsed online if you're a legit victim of uh, rape you're not going to be able you're not going to be willing to step back out there because you're thinking raw if they don't believe these women right with their story that seemed kind of credible and i've got an actually legit one imagine what they're going to do to me so that's one um uh, obviously i said here sexual i think regrettable sexual encounters aren't rape we should never do that i think we've all been in encounters i think we've all kissed or slept with people that we didn't want to or that we didn't really enjoy their company or that we kind of regretted the day after right that is the where essentially the walk of shame comes from right the walk of shame is the fact that you've not that you've stayed up all night doing lines of coke with some stranger the fact that the walk of shame is usually because you've been shacked up with somebody you probably shouldn't be shacked up with right and you're trying to get back home without society noticing that you've clearly been out for 24 hours right um i think that's okay right that that's part of kind of growing up that's part of actually finding out who's for you and who isn't for you by fumbling a little bit and hooking up with people they shouldn't be hooking up with and then when you do end up with somebody that actually lines up with your ideals and what you're about suddenly everything starts to make sense suddenly all those past relationships suddenly start to look a lot worse <laughs> um here again i said um Although there needs to be an open, judgment-free conversation about men and women and how we caught each other, that's probably not going to happen, though, isn't it, really? I don't think we're really ready for that conversation about what actual courtship is like, what actually trying to hook up with somebody actually looks like, especially if you write it on paper. It's fripping nuts, right? You need to really think about how you hook up with a girl or how you hook up with a guy, and it's really, really nasty, In com especially when you compare them to the standards on social media or the standards with people that are, you know, um, uh, what socially active or work, whatever. It's not, it doesn't line up correctly, but we need to get there. Pardon? says yeah um but it's uh the most con oh yeah and i've read here i've read here but i guess in uh in kind of opposition to that the other thing that's concerning is that i remember being at a house party ages ago and you know you get talking everyone's high and drunk and stuff in the living room and people are kind of sharing stories and i remember someone brought up a story i don't know why about you know some sexual assault thing and then i remember you know people chipping in everyone chipping in especially the girls there and i was like hold on a minute i was like what can what has every girl in here had some kind of experience that they would kind of classify as sexual assault and they said yeah so a couple of them even said they've been legitimately raped i was like what the hell so that was kind of really took me aback i was like jesus christ so most young women have kind of had that situation happen to them which is abhorrent to say the least in it right so with that you're kind of especially for me you're i'm kind of prone i'm kind of always 
you know, the problem is kind of, I kind of want to believe them when they say, when they say something's happened, because most women have had that experience of had something close to that or know somebody close to them has gone through it. So I don't think there's many that would purposely go out. Again, there is a small minority of people, cases that you do hear somebody screaming rape, it didn't happen. The guy goes into prison for 26 years. There are those horrendous stories out there, right? But they're the kind of nightmarish ones. I think mostly, most people, most sensible, most decent people wouldn't necessarily want to put someone through it if they didn't, wouldn't want to put an innocent guy through something like that if they didn't actually f- legitimately think that happened. I don't think so. So if the if one, two, three, four, five, six people come out and say that about you, there has to be some validity to it. There has to be. Now again, we're talking about rape. We're not talking about you know the stuff that happened with Delia, where he's supposed to be trying to court younger girls, because that's a very complex issue about you know society not being prepared about the conversation about you know um, women, young women's desire to hook up with older dude, older dudes desire to hook up with younger girls. We're not really you know ready for that conversation at the moment. But I'm talking about straight up people violating somebody, right? Um, you know, trying to um, you know gain sexual advances or trying to get. Yeah, trying to be sexual with somebody clearly doesn't want it that's the issue at hand here and for every girl out there to have some story that they can kind of you know talk about that happened to them personally or somebody they know that's really distressing um and then there's also to end there i think to def- if you want to defend him you'd say maybe defending brian Callan, you'd say in future more women if they do get raped should just call the police to file a police report at, at the least again i've, re- I've watched enough documentaries i've seen enough programs which again it's not actually going through the experience but i've seen a lot of stuff that obviously tells you that the process or the way that um, rapes are dealt with and with the police departments are it's horrendous right and i can't even talk about how it is in america but in the uk it's just terrible um you know how you get violated with rape kits and stuff the questioning it's just you know they have to do their jobs but it's not a pleasant experience but i think there should be more onus placed on there should be more importance placed on women when they go through something like that to regardless who the person is even if it's a close friend it's somebody you know at work you don't ruin their life they've got a wife and kids you have to report to the police you just have to um just so that even if it even if it doesn't go in you with the police and you do end up coming out again and to saying it in public you have documentation and a record that shows you did take it to the highest levels of authority but they did a poor job in dealing with it right so it kind of gives you a story i won't say legitimacy but it does kind of put your story in some kind of context that you you're not trying to do it for the clout i don't know um i guess that's how you would defend him with it that sound good defending him i'm not too sure but then i also stumbled upon this video that kind of describes probably kind of gives a because it kind of made me think about amy schumer's post and what might happen in the situation where brian callen is vindicated and it's shown that he was innocent of the crimes and he didn't do what the ladies are alleging him that he did do and i was thinking what would amy Schumer do with that post that she put up right where she essentially went at callen at him said hey you're a creep la 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 what would she do um but then it also got me thinking why does she hate callen so much right and then i stumbled on this video from the fire and the kid <laughs> where they essentially rip into uh amy schumer and considering how small the comedy circle is and considering how people it feels like especially someone like Bert he does it a lot Bert Crash he always tiptoes around Amy Schumer and doesn't really say nothing bad about her because I'm assuming she's a big Hollywood celebrity and also doesn't want to you know add to the pylon because people don't like her and I think she still jokes but he, it seems like everyone in the industry is very careful about what they say about her right even someone like a Rogan doesn't want to say that she still jokes for instance right which you know you'd think he would be um more willing to do so considering his experience with Carlos Mencia but this video might give you an insight into why Schumer has that kind of time for Callan and why she sort of hates him. This is from The Fire and the Kid. I think what episode, I don't know what episode it is. Load up on the screen, should load up before. I'm poorly prepared as per usual. Let it load and I'll tell you what number it is. I get to get the timestamp as well. That is at 3 minutes 47. Let me Can load. we revisit the Amy Schumer incident? Yeah, there yeah. you go. Uh, so we got I... some shit for. So I guess this episode was off the back of that incident that happened with Amy Schumer when she went to the comedy club of some guy that was doing his um, headlining show and she interrupted it mid I got some, so, so I got, so let me, let me say, yeah. let me start by no, this. I just let got some new information. Let me defend yeah. both. So. Yeah, she interrupted the show mid set and essentially t- told the guy that she wants to do her, her minutes which is not etiquette in comedy. I guess the etiquette is that you let the person do their time. And then if you want to go on after before somebody else closes, you can do that, but you don't interrupt somebody mid set. I mean, that's not what you do, but I thought this 
kind of beautifully kind of uh, is an example of maybe why Mishima kind of hates these guys because I think they were the only people who kind of went in at her apart from Legion of the Skank Stooge which I don't think she's ever going to kind of bump into but let me see if I can get up on it this is 3 minutes 47 let's scroll across here do, do, do. get up on the screen again where is it 347 it's around here and not here there you go yeah you know the grind and, and by the way can I just say something about Amy Schumer's stand-up comedy all due respect, she's not. She's she's not great. I, I, I... That's why she hates him. <laughs> that, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Just that one sentence. She's not great. People that I don't think people actually say this out loud about their fellow comedians. It's not something that people do for the most part. I think they sort of allude to people that they don't like and stuff, but they don't ever go out ham and say, "Hey, she's not great at what she does." I have many many friends who are are funnier. <laughs> See, that's Amy, why she doesn't Amy's, like it. Amy's good. And Amy has earned her place and Amy's her movie train wreck. She's doing great, but it's not like Amy Schumer is a great comic genius. I don't, I, I'm, I get a kick out of this. There's a comic who's been doing this so long. I just get a kick out of popularity. doesn't mean that you're really funny. I know a lot of women that I'll put. That's interesting. Him sitting next to Brandon Schaub and saying something like that, isn't it? Hey, eh? but hey. Put up against Amy Schumer. I'll put their hour up against Amy Schumer in a heartbeat. I can give you a number of them. So it's not oh, like. Just off the top of and then also, if anything comes out about Shaw, don't be surprised if she posts something about him because look what she did. Look what he did. Not <laughs> like Schlesinger, I, yeah. Winnie Cummings. There are a lot of women that'll hold their own and, and oh. way better. So, which I don't like to get into this comparison stuff. But no, because it's everyone's flavor. Everybody's like, different. But let, let's not get let's not also get it twisted. Ain't no. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Callan. That's why she hates him. Oh, oh, brutal, man. Don't get me wrong. He's probably right in what he said, but as a comedian to comedian, professional to professional, you just can't go on your show trashing me like that, innit? So when she saw that story pop up about him, she was probably like, oh, oh, I'm going to eat very well tonight. <laughs> so she posted it, but God bless them, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's why Amy Schumer hates Brian Callan. It's not going to change. Oh, I stumbled upon it. That was a good one. But yeah, anyway, what can you do? What can you do? 